Directing your attention this way. Welcome to this 50th birthday celebration for Santa Fe Prep. Very exciting. Fifty years ago to the day, September 3rd, 1963, is when the first students uh, began and faculty at Santa Fe Prep on Upper Canyon Road. I also found out that today is the, exactly the 50th anniversary of the lava lamp. So those two somehow are related. And it's an honor, um, I'm very humbled, and I'm frankly, I'm just a little bit bewildered by this whole idea of celebrating 50th anniversary as a school. Um, this day has always seemed to shimmer on the far horizon and yet suddenly here we are um, all together and it's just lovely to see you. I hope you have a program which lays out what's going to happen today. And we're going to begin by offering warm greetings to some of the school's founders who are about to arrive by a vintage vehicle. And these are real vintage vehicles as in they haven't been spruced up, they are of the time. So I'm going to introduce them as they enter the quad, and you will give them warm applause, I'm sure. And their timing will be 
Right now, hopefully. <laughs> because that's the way we planned it. So, that's the way it's going to happen. They're going to be escorted in by our... All right, here we go. Wait, don't clap yet, don't clap yet. Wait until they actually are on their way in. I'm going to talk about them, and then uh, you can give them some applause when I'm done describing them. So the first vehicle, a super looking, I think, 1953 Chevy? Chevy? OK, good. People who know trucks are telling me, yes, it's a Chevy. 1953 Chevy, let me tell you. Um, Who's coming in? They are escorted in by our senior members of student council, Aaron Stevens, Maggie Stone, Jimmy Buchanan. And coming this way, rounding the corner, even as I speak very slowly, okay, is Bill Thompson. Bill, come on this way. He's sporting a blue hat. And he's with his wife, Ingrid. Bill was the first teacher hired at Santa Fe Prep by headmaster Francis Bloodgood to teach history and math. He taught at Prep for several years and eventually became the founding assistant head of the Green Hill School. Bill Thompson. Describe him and then give him some applause. Tom Sidorik, the school's first English teacher, and his wife Hilda, there with Jimmy Buchanan. And Tom arrived at the original prep campus on Upper Canyon Road in those early days. driving a super cool black Corvette in 1963. He's also a playwright, uh, he's done a number of things with his career. You'll hear from Tom in a few minutes. Now pulling up a Nick Worth's iconic Volkswagen Bug. <clears throat> he's our very own Bud Kelly. Many of you know Bud as the grandfather of Caroline Stanley, class of 2013. Bud was the first secretary of the Board of Trustees. His daughters, Susan and Pamela, are also prep grads. And last year, Bud published this memoir, which I recommend to you, The Buffalo Tale. It's a terrific book. Please welcome Mr. Bud Kelly. not so vintage, but it is super cool, this Camaro. So let me tell you about um, this man as he comes up here. Please hold your applause until, uh, until I finish and he's here. This is Dr. Ned Goodrich. He comes all the way from Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Ned probably deserves as much credit for the founding of this school as any other person. He's a graduate of Hopkins School, 1945, in New Haven, Connecticut. So he had an excellent independent school education, and he wanted to create something similar here in Santa Fe, where he moved to practice medicine. Ned called one of his former teachers at Hopkins, who told him, Ned, you just need to get a group of your friends together and start a school. And that group of six, of whom Ned 
is the only one still living, signed the Articles of Incorporation creating this school in December of 1961. And that moment is captured in the iconic photo of the school's founders on the steps of La Fasana. Now, two weeks ago, Ned and his son Al won a rowing race in a skull on the Schuylkill River in Philadelphia. This is Ned Goodrich. Ned just told me that uh, uh, General Ellington's wife, Peggy, introduced him to the woman who would become his second wife. So I just learned that right now. <laughs> We have another important founder already here among us. Uh, I'd like to recognize her. Isabel Ziegler, also a founding trustee, longtime supporter of many causes in Santa Fe and Espanola, and the author of a great memoir, Rio Grande's Sand in Your Shoes. Isabel, welcome and thank you. We have many other founders among us today, uh, students who 50 years ago today walked down that dirt drive at Upper Canyon Road. There were 63 students in all. If you were one of those founding students, most of them I think are behind us, behind me rather. Please stand and be recognized for your spirit of adventure. On behalf of the school, I offer a warm and enduring thank you to all who have devoted themselves to prep over the school's first 50 years. How about if you have served the school as a trustee during that time, donating your time and expertise and resources to support the vision of this school, please stand to be recognized and thanks. Trustees. current or former parent of a prep student and have offered up or did offer up your trust to the school in this most noble enterprise of raising and educating our children, please stand to be recognized. Parents. <laughs> If you graduated from prep or are a current student, you have embraced the hard work necessary to earn an outstanding education, and we want to applaud you. Please stand. Graduates and students. If you're standing back here, uh, filter around this way or go through the doors and come out that way and head up above there. There are bancos over there to sit on and there's still some seats. So it'll just take a minute for you folks to clear in, if you will. Thank you. Thank you. 
Congress. <laughs> Very good. I was just reminded, what about grandparents and all of those who supported friends of the school? You are to be recognized as well. Thank you. And to the teachers and staff, from Tom and Bill, who bet on this most improbable enterprise 50 years ago, to those who started teaching here last week, and all whose tenures fall between, please stand so that we can thank you for your enthusiasm for and commitment to our kids. Now I need to thank several people specifically who have been working toward this day for well over a year. <laughs> Trustees Rachel O'Keefe and Melissa Cece, um, they are the chairs of our 50th anniversary committee. And these folks are all getting a terrific book written by uh, John Worth called About the Los Alamos Ranch School. So it's the history of another terrific New Mexico independent school. So Rachel and Melissa, please step forward. The two people who have organized All Things Founders Day, trustee and parent Elizabeth Bradley and parent, parent Julie Murray, please come forward. We have a parent, Krista Tyra, who's pulled together today's Griffin store in the middle school quad. Be sure to visit that for some Griffin swag. Krista, please come forward. <laughs> Steve Machen, my predecessor as headmaster, longtime Spanish teacher, and now the school's archivist, has done more for this school over 40 plus years than anyone on the planet and his memory for names and faces from decades ago is just astounding. Steve, thanks for all you have done to both create this school's history and now tell it. I'm not sure Jamie Jett is here. She designed the historic panels that you'll see inside, so at some point, you may get a chance to uh, thank her. But Zaley Pollan is here. Zaley's class of 86 at prep, a journalist, and she bravely stepped up seven months ago to articulate the history of our school, both on the panels and the beautiful commemorative magazine you will all receive in about a month. So let's thank Zaley. This is the last thank you, I promise. <laughs> but our advancement team has carried the proverbial water for this day down to the smallest detail, as they do for so many aspects of school life. Marsha Lenningham, alumni coordinator, Andrea Gonzalez, and in particular, Keisha Atiyari's director of advancement, please come forward and accept us. <laughs> Okay, what's the most important thing I can tell you right now and do it in about three minutes? Here it is. At heart, I'm an English teacher and a soccer coach. I approach the life of this school from the perspective of an evolving narrative, 
a story that gains depth and contour and color and new characters virtually every day. We're also like a team. We practice math and Spanish and drawing and acting. And tomorrow we'll come back to practice it again, maybe get a little better. And in the unfolding narrative that is prep, we become each year a stronger team and aim a little higher in our sense of purpose. Tomorrow morning, we'll make our first trip with seventh graders to 100 Elk Camp in Colorado for three days as we work to create the best possible social climate for them. In a little over a month, Breakthrough Santa Fe, our program, will receive a Pinion Award from the Santa Fe Community Foundation for Courageous Innovation. The award is for breakthrough, but that idea of courageous innovation is the central theme of PrEP's first 50 years, and it's up to all of us and many to come to carry that courageous innovation forward. Now please welcome Kelsey Brown, class of 1982, Santa Fe PrEP. Wow, what a group. I'm so honored to be the board chair during this 50th year of Santa Fe Prep because my family has its own long history with Santa Fe Prep. One of the early trustees was my father, Doug Schwartz, who is here. Oh, oh boy, here comes the emotions. And <laughs> he was board chair in the early 70s, and I'm thrilled to be following in his footsteps. However, it was my brother and sister who were the prep pioneers for our family. They started at stu as students at the old campus in 1967. My brother graduated along that river in 1969. My sister and I graduated in this quad much, much later. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to give my oldest son, Griffin, his diploma a year ago. No coincidence on the name, by the way. My son, Liam, will graduate this year with the 50th class. And my daughter, Aiden, will graduate in 2018. But my mother is whom we have to thank for this long relationship with PrEP. In 1966, my father was offered a job here in Santa Fe. At the time, he was a professor at University of Kentucky, and my family was living in Lexington. My brother and sister were in middle and in high school, and the decision to uproot them and move them at that time in their lives was difficult for my parents. <laughs> While making the decision, my mother got a subscription to the New Mexican and had it sent to her in Kentucky. She read many articles about the state of education in New Mexico at the time and was worried about where she would send my siblings if they decided to move here. Then she read about a fledgling school that had set up shop on an idyllic campus along a river. My parents researched the school and liked the philosophy which at the, t at the time was described as a school that seeks to help its students develop an awareness of their responsibilities to themselves, their families, and the community of which they are a part. Knowing that there was an educational opportunity for their children, as well as an interesting opportunity for my father, they decided to make the move west. Obviously, that school was Santa Fe Prep, just four years old at the time. At its core, Prep has held on to that initial mission, only magnifying and amplifying those initial aspirations and ideals. Since that time, like for my parents, PrEP has played a major part in many families' decision to make Santa Fe their home. We all feel lucky that in this unique town, there's a school of PrEP's caliber that we're all so passionate about. It's an exciting time to be involved at PrEP, and I'm so happy that so many of you obviously feel the same appreciation, appreciation that I do for the school that has done so much for now several generations of students. Welcome and enjoy the rest of the day. Kelsey. I've asked Tom Sidorik to share a few thoughts on what it meant to be a teacher who helped start Santa Fe Prep in 1963. Tom, thanks for making the trip from California to help us celebrate. Well, it's a special moment to be here 50 years later. I'm glad I made it here. <laughs> the uh, I think the one thing I want to say today is 
probably primarily focused on the students that are out there in the audience and to tell them that when Bill and I and a few others arrived here in that about the same time of year in 63, uh, we gathered at the headmaster's house and uh, we hadn't yet seen the campus which was yet to be finished and we hadn't uh, met each other before this and there we sat eyeball to eyeball and wondering how and when and how successfully we were going to do this task that was before us. And I would say that what I found out then and since then up until this very day is that a single person, maybe two or three, can make a difference. And I think oftentimes when you're a student or one of many or a large group of graduates, whatever, you have a hard time seeing yourself as a, an individual that can probably rise up and make a difference. And often that opportunity really doesn't show itself in any, there, there are no trumpets, there are no uh, lights that go off, but in that quiet moment where you are between uh, your own inner self and whatever else you've chosen to interact with, that, that at that moment there's something going on that very well could make a difference that you're not even sure is actually happening. Much of what is the reward of teaching happens substantially later. And this day today, when students walk up to me and say, Mr. Sidorik, you have made a difference in my life. You really did uh, teach me this or teach me that, how to think, how to uh, react, how to analyze. Uh, you, you inspired me to move on, to uh, read better things, to uh, stand up and be a, a member of a group uh, and be able to be articulate. All of those things made a difference in a lot of people's lives. I don't think I knew I was doing that at the time. But as I stand here today and many of the students have come up and said that and this school is standing 50 years later, I think that somehow Bill and I and a few others uh, who are not here today did in fact make a difference. And as I said, we were young. We just did it, we uh, committed ourselves to it, and I would suggest that any of you out there who doubt that a single or a small group of people can make a difference, take a look at today, take a look around you, take a look at the buildings, take a look at all the people who have come on since these 50 years, and I think you'll see that in a very low-key way, you sometimes can make a huge difference. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. I, I should tell you that we had, a, we had a lunch earlier today for founding students and families and faculty and trustees over at the IHM. It was just lovely. And when I, uh, when I said to a graduate of the class of 67, um, you know, this is, this is Tom Sidorik, his face just went, he just went. I mean, he just opened up like, oh my gosh, my teacher from 45, 50 years ago. So excited to see him. Not fear at all, more just, just <laughs> joy, it was sheer joy. It was really something. It makes a big difference. Uh, our final speaker is Zaley Pollan, who's uncovered enough material and stories about prep over the last seven months to write several histories. And she's going to give you a little insight into what she's discovered. Zaley. Thank you all. I am so happy to be here and to see so many of these people that I've written about and read about. Tom, you didn't even mention the yellow Corvette. It's really, there are some extraordinary backstories to all of these people. Um, and, and a project like this, this historic panels, the magazine, no one person can do it. So I'd actually just like to start with a few thank yous. And definitely to Adele Manasco, whose initial research led the groundwork for this project. There were faculty like Parka, Todd Kurth, the amazing Marie White, I'm sorry you all are behind me here, um, who really paved the way and gave a lot of stories to Steve Machen, whose hours and hours of research, of editing, of storytelling <coughs> made a lot of this project happen. Your institutional memory is phenomenal. 
Jamie Jett Walker, and also Michael Motley, whose design you haven't seen. You won't see until the end of the month when the magazine comes in your mailbox, but really brilliant, gifted designers here. And of course, Keja, Andrea, Marsha, and Jim. For those of you who are new students, you should feel so confident that this school has just phenomenal leadership. And really, it's been such a joy to do this project with you guys back there. <laughs> um, so there are a couple things that I was reminded of during this project, compiling history, um, much of which I learned in graduate school. And the first is that history is a work in progress. It's never really finished. And this idea of a definitive history is false. So history is a perspective on an event. And you can ask any two people what happened somewhere, and they will undoubtedly have different descriptions of the event. So this has been my life the past seven months. <laughs> so what we have done here is really attempt to compile all of the different stories based on documents, official documents, board minutes, so many of your stories. And thank you all for those of you who responded to my emails. And those of you who didn't, the 60th anniversary is going to be a challenge <laughs> for you. We're coming after you. Um, and all of these incredible photos that are brought together that get increasingly more in focus as we get near 2013. <laughs> but it's really wonderful. And sadly, my greatest regret is that we can't include all of the stories. There had to be a lot of editing, obviously. Um, limited space and time and stories that I never heard, that I heard too late, that I certainly hope to hear maybe this afternoon after this presentation. Um, and of course, there were the stories that could not be printed in this publication. <laughs> and let me tell you, the uncensored version of Prep History is going to go up on eBay, and I hope all of you will be bidding. It's really phenomenal. We have a wonderful, wonderful, hysterically funny story. But obviously, in the magazine, uh, it's a little bit tamer. Um, but the stories that really stood out for me were the continual ones about dedication of various teachers the support of this community to individuals and to everyone in times of hardship and loss. I've shared a lot of tears with people, both joyful and sorrowful. Pulled my hair out in frustration to get a certain chronology correct. I've got bald spots right here. And again, I heard more and more about the school built on dedication and love from the founders who had the idea that the school could work despite others having failed the initial trustees, family, staff, students who literally built the campus, painting and carrying rocks to help make this institution run. You all created such a solid foundation from which this school has grown and flourished and continues to do so. So as you all go in and visit these panels that we've installed, I invite you to consider your own prep story. Take a moment, write in some of the memory books that are there nearby for the purpose. Share if you don't want to write with a friend, with a partner, with a child, with a parent, because we are all a collection of our own stories, and our stories are so important and so valuable, and we only hope that all of the stories we've collected here give you a sense of this incredible, joyous journey that has been Santa Fe Prep. So if you come across any error or grave omission, there might be one or two, I don't know, think of it as a Navajo rug with a purposeful imperfection to let any, any bad spirit pass through. And you can also talk to me and Jim about it. So, so thank you all so much for being here to celebrate this milestone. Accept this work, these panels, and the magazine as a work of dedication and love, serious love for this school, from me and from the school to all of you, with deep, deep thanks. We're about to move on to the celebration. We have a couple last things to do commemoratively here. Um, you can see in your programs the various events and spaces. Be sure to get down to the meme to see the faculty art show. There's storytelling around. And I encourage all of us in the next hour and a half or so to take initiative by introducing ourselves to people we don't know. Perhaps especially for students and teachers, current students and teachers, to reach out to the school's elders and give them a window into your life of prep because they are very curious about it. So we've asked a graduate from each decade of the school to ring the Ellington Bell one time to commemorate that decade. The Ellington Bell, the top of the steps here. 
for the 1960s, Mike Hancock, the class of 1967. For the 1970s, Warren Thompson, class of 72. For the 1980s, Todd Kirk, class of 81. For the 1990s, Adelma Roach Nasco, class of 92. <laughs> For the 2000s, Frida Simons Burns, the class of 2000. And for the 2010s, a member of this year's senior class, DJ Casados. <laughs> if we listen very carefully, you can take your seats again if you're standing, we may hear a salute from the St. John's College bell. Bobby, we may not hear it, but it may, that may, it may still be happening, though. Okay. Charge that? <laughs> you were not in charge of that, Bobby. Sorry. Rachel, should we give it a minute or no? Okay. And uh, we have one last thing to do. Melissa, you can call over the IHM right now. Um, you may hear, as we, as we cut the ribbon on these panels, the peeling of the bells over at the, uh, at the Carmelite Monastery. We met with Mother Rose today, and she said she would love to celebrate our 50th anniversary by having their bells ring for two or three minutes. So that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's just listen for a moment. It's great. That may be St. John's. We'll hear the IHM bells more directly. So as those come on, what we're actually going to do is cut the ribbon on the exhibit, and we've asked uh, Dr. Ned Goodrich, Isabel Ziegler, Bud Kelly, Tom Sudork, and Bill Thompson all to do that with this huge <laughs> pair of ridiculous scissors. <laughs> Come on over, gentlemen. Thank you. Good. A little less um, 